Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to give it a minute while folks join us, but we're really thrilled to have you here today for today's cafe. Vote yes, advocating for our forest preserve and conservation districts. Just as a reminder, please keep yourselves on mute and um, you can place all of your questions in the chat. We will have time for question and answer afterwards. And I wanna give a quick reminder that this cafe will be recorded and uploaded to our website along with a PDF of those slides. We'll also send it out to all of you who registered. So you'll be getting that in an email. All right, we're slowing down. So I'm gonna give a quick thank you. I wanna give a thank you to our sponsors, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, Urban and Community Forestry Program, and the US Forest Service for support for our cafes and workshops. We are delighted to be able to bring presentations like this to you and um, to learn more about the work that they do and especially about Tree City USA, I'll be dropping a link into the chat. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dan Loebs. Dan is the um, Director of Land Protection at the Conservation Foundation. And uh, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Laura. Um, slide, please. We are in an incredible mo moment right now. We have the opportunity to support four different countywide forest preserve and conservation districts. Each of them are asking voters whether they will tax themselves just a little bit in order to get a lot back in terms of more open space preserved, more trails, more wildlife habitat, more educational programming, more protection from flooding, et cetera, et cetera. Over the past 30 years, <clears throat> voters in Northeast Illinois have voted to tax themselves to the tune of $2 billion for these very things. They've turned down many other good things along the way, schools, libraries, fire stations, but have said yes repeatedly to open space. 90% of all ballot measures for open space have passed, way more than the 70% average nationwide. And not one countywide measure has failed so far, of course. Clearly, people in this area really like this stuff. And this fall, we might just add another 33% more to our 30-year total, all in one day. What a big day this could be. Whether you're interested in the 30 by 30 initiative, Green uh, Chicago Wildernesses, Green Vision Initiatives, CMAPs, Green Infrastructure Vision, the Chicago Trees Initiative, mitigating climate change, and so on. These measures represent important steps along these paths. Kane and DuPage Forest Preserves, along with McHenry County Conservation District, are seeking small increases in their property tax rates. These changes will be permanent and bring in dependable, sustainable income that they can use in a variety of ways. Lake County Forest Reserve is looking for a more targeted increase to buy bonds for acquisition, restoration, and capital projects. These bonds will be paid off over time and the increased tax will no longer be needed. We at the Conservation Foundation are managing the campaigns for the Kane and DuPage Forest Preserves. We have organized 14 different campaigns over the past 27 years, and we have won all 14 so far. So, in Kane, we have run all five of their successful bond referenda in the past. As I said, this one is for a small permanent tax increase, which is a little different. However, We've done extensive polling for both the Kane and DuPage referenda, and we feel we have a good chance of being successful with this one too, 
as long as we have a strong campaign. We've created a campaign committee that we call Cane Neighbors for Open Space, Clean Water, and Clean Air. We have four prominent Kane County people as co-chairs and about 30 other folks from throughout the county. Three of the co-chairs have been involved in several previous referenda, and one of them is the retired deputy director of the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. We raise funds, send out mailers, do digital media, Facebook, Instagram, etc. The impact to most property owners is about $3 a month. And in return, the Forest Preserve will be able to acquire an average of 125 acres per year and restore an additional 250 acres each year. They also have a variety of preserve improvements that they'll make, including making some of their preserves more accessible for people with limited mobility, and even bringing bison to one of their preserves by the end of this year. If you'd like to learn more, visit the Kane Forest Preserves website or our campaign website at voteyescaneforest.org. Turning to the page, we created a similar campaign committee there too, with the oh so imaginative name of DuPage Neighbors for Open Space, Clean Water, and Clean Air. This is the third referendum campaign that we've organized for DuPage Forest Reserve. And again, the first that's for a small permanent increase in the tax rate. The polling was good here too, as long as we have a good campaign. The cost to the average property owner is a little bit more, about $350 a month, but they will benefit a lot as well. The Forest Preserve estimates they'll be able to preserve an additional 250 acres, mainly to expand and connect existing preserves. More ecological restoration and management will occur, more trails will be built and improved, and more educational programming will be created. The DuPage Forest Preserve will be transparent, as will Kane as well. There will be full public disclo disclosure of how the funds are spent. Now to talk a bit about the referendum in Lake County, we have Mike Tully. Take it away, Mike. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate that. Um, very similar message uh, uh, as Dan's. Um, uh, in Lake County, as Dan mentioned, we are looking to do a capital only uh, bond referendum, $155 million. Uh, we put together a, a group of folks, the, Lake, the Friends of the Lake County Forest Preserves, um, and we're working closely with Open Lands and the Trust for Public Land to get out our message and to get organized. Um, again, the cost um, to the voters is very similar to the other uh, pursuit, less than $3 a month for the average homeowner. Actually, we calculated it at $2.75, and that's a maximum. And I we always want to say that because that's as, as if the Forest Preserve District implemented all the bonds in year one. And um, I know from past experience that, that, that they don't have the staff capacity to do that. So it'll be spread out. So it'll take a while to get to that first so to get to that 275. Um, specifically, the uh, $155 million will be split up between um, $65 million for land acquisition. And uh, there are still some really great opportunities in Lake County to add to existing preserves. And there are still some very large tracts of uh, undeveloped land in Lake County, and they won't, they won't be there much longer. So now, now is the time. Um, then of the $90 million for projects, $30 million of that is specifically for habitat restoration, for, um, which has just dozens of um, benefits, uh, most specifically clean air, clean water, uh, flood control, as well as home for uh, endangered and threatened species, of which Lake County has more than any other county uh, in the state of Illinois. Uh, the other $60 million will be for um, public access improvements. Um, there is some money set it, targeted for opening new preserves and new trails, but also going back and to looking at the infrastructure that's been put on the ground for the last 60 years and upgrading that to 
more um, modern infrastructure to reduce the amount of infrastructure, as well as the infrastructure that will be put forward will be more maintenance friendly and easier for the staff to maintain. Because again, there's no operating funds in this referendum. So it's not like the Forest Preserve can go out and hire more folks to take care of what they put on the ground. Um, so uh, we do have um, a website you can see on your screen. We have Facebook and all the other social medias. And I think we'll get to that um, a little later on when we go over the toolkit. Again, much like uh, uh, Kane and DuPage, our polling says this is a very popular referendum with the folks. Our job is just to get the message out there. If people know about it, uh, there most people are likely to vote for it. So we just we just don't want to surprise people when they turn their ballot over and we're and, and they go and they scratch their head and say, what's this? So our job is to get the message out there that we're there and we know people will uh, will vote for it. Um, and we'll have uh, time for questions in a little bit. So uh, slide. Okay, so I, this is uh, my slide. Um, I'm Carolyn Campbell. I'm with the McHenry County Conservation Foundation. Um, our com campaign committee was vote yes for the McHenry County Conservation District proposition. Uh, we may rethink that next time around, but uh, a little long. But um, anyway, we have a nine member committee. Um, we have two people. We have Emily and, and Will from Emily from Open Lands and Will from um, Trust for Public Lands. Um, and their guidance has been um, very critical to uh, moving this along. Um, two thirds of our three quarters of our funding has come from the foundation um, in terms of helping to get the message out. Uh, we ours is more. This um, is a proposition to increase the limiting rate. So very similar to Kane. In this case, the rate is 0.027 percent, um, which were for an average homeowner um, would be. Um, $2.25 per month or $27 per the year. Uh, we are actually focusing more on maintenance. Um, they had bond uh, uh, issuances back in the early 2000s. Those are coming due and will be paid off. And now they want to focus on reinvesting in those lands and those amenities. So their focus is really on water quality um, in McHenry County. Uh, we are entirely dependent upon our groundwater for our drinking supply. Um, and it's it's interesting to have that conversation with so many people who are not aware of that. So one of the main focuses uh, for um, the use of this money will be on water quality, um, helping to create those spaces where water can be held, filtered, and uh, uh, replenish our aquifers. Um, also, focus will be put on the quality of our surface waters and rivers and streams um, to bring those back into par. Um, the other focus will be on wildlife habitat restoration. And when we're out talking to people, um, I think it, the, it's important to stress how the quality of the land can very much determines the biodiversity um, on that landscape. I mean, we, when I get out, go out and I talk to people, we know that animals can survive just about anywhere. Um, you've got raccoons in garage, you know, garage roofs, uh, mice in the basement, um, coyotes roam, you know, the city streets of Chicago. I've seen them on camera waiting for the light to change. Um, but we don't get the biodiversity, the rich biodiversity that we need. Um, without providing the space for that to take place. And so a lot of the focus will be re restoring lands um, that were purchased and um, getting them into the high quality they should be. Uh, the third area of focus will also will be on access um, here in McHenry County, making sure that we are keeping up the amenities that we already have. We have over 118 miles of river. We have um, 105 miles of hiking trails, 45 miles of biking trails. Some of our biking trails are over 30 years old um, and are in need of repair. So a lot of this focus is going to go back and just make sure that our amenities um, are up to date, but also as we do that, make them ADA compliant and make sure that we are increasing access, but also improving accessibility. We have a project at um, in Cary at the Hollows, it's a, an accessible boat launch. So um, anybody in a wheelchair is gonna be able to get into the water and enjoy that beautiful lake just like everybody else. So we're gonna be focusing on those three things, water quality, wildlife habitat, and improving access. Now the money can be, it's not limited. And when we're out talking to people, we do know and recognize that land acquisition is still very important to people. And so as opportunities arise, the district will be in fact, um, taking advantages, advantage of those opportunities as they arrive. Um, 
The other uh, thing that's happening, we will not be extending this um, increase um, until 2026. It will coincide with the payoff of our debt. So voters will actually, our property owners will actually see a reduction in the amount that they pay, uh, but we don't focus on that because we know that people are willing to pay for natural lands and um, the improvements that this uh, proposition will bring. Um, our committee is vote yes, conserve McHenry.org. Um, and we have a lot of um, support. We've been actively seeking endorsements and the a list of endorsements are growing and can be found on our website. And I know we have questions later, so thank you. And Abby, I think it's your turn. No, uh, okay. No, I think it's, uh, I think it's mine. Um, yeah, uh, so thank you. thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, Carolyn. Um, so Chris Kessler, Director of Policy um, with Open Lands. I'm going to share some uh, key messages here for us. Um, so you've just received a lot of information about four different propositions um, in different uh, collar counties that are similar in many ways, um, but also each unique in their own right. Um, so the question that you might be having right now is, how do you communicate all this information to potential voters? What are the key points you should be talking about? Um, and this is where we all play a very important role. Um, you know, during this time of year, it can be very difficult for campaigns, even um, with messages like ours, to cut through all the noise. Um, people are being bombarded with, um, you know, glossy mailers from all different types of candidates, television ads, robocalls, and more, um, depending on what districts you live in. So. That's where um, your support is critical in getting our message out because the, um, you as advocates, one of the best things you can do is have these conversations with your network, um, with your friends, with your family, because you're able to cut through that noise. You're a trusted voice in these people's lives and organization um, that they look to for guidance. So that's where you're going to be, um, be very critical in the success of these ref or these propositions. Um, next slide, please. Um, so when you're reaching out to these, these people within your network, what you, you want to hit the key, the key information. You don't necessarily have to talk about um, every single point we just covered, but if you could only get one quick sentence in, um, the key thing is number one, vote yes on election day, um, Tuesday, November 5th for, um, if they're in Lake County, the Lake County Forest Reserve District, if they're in McHenry County, the Conservation District, and Sanford, DuPage, and Kane. And then focus on talking about the money, or about the benefits, not the money, sorry, um, about the benefits that this provides. And that's, you know, uh, we're going to get into that, but, you know, top line is, you know, clean air, clean water, um, and wildlife and protecting our natural areas. Um, and that's really the key point here. And again, trusting people to vote, um, to vote on election day, Tuesday, November 5th for these referendums, or um, even voting earlier. Um, voting has never been more accessible and easier, particularly in the state of Illinois. People can request a vote by mail ballot. There's um, early voting opportunities have been expanded. So there's really no excuse for people not to get out and vote this election. Um, so really hit that point home if you're talking with them, that there's a lot of opportunities, even if they can't vote on election day, they can request a vote by mail ballot. They can make time to vote early. Um, there's really a lot of opportunities out there. And in each of our toolkits, um, and on our website, there'll be information for each county of how they can find that information um, for their um, for their polling location. Um, next slide, please. Um, so what I'll do, what I'll, what will all these referendums do? Um, the first point um, is they'll protect drinking water and water quality of our rivers, lakes, and streams. Um, access to clean water, um, whether it's um, drinking water, or just improved water quality in our natural areas is very important to people. So if you're, when we're again, talking about the benefits and not the money, uh, talking about the importance of clean water and how these propositions will help protect our drinking water and water, water quality is important. Um, next slide, please. Um, what else will they do? Um, all these referendums will um, be critical in restoring habitat for wildlife um, by protecting uh, natural areas. Next slide. Um, they will also um, improve park access for all people um, and all these different um, propositions. We've heard how it's going to enable um, our forest reserves and conservation districts to help acquire um, new, acquire and protect more land, uh, which will not only provide benefits for people, but also um, the aforementioned wildlife. 
Um, and then additional, why is it important? So another key thing that's pulled very well in a lot of our messaging is that the fact that in today's digital age, it's more than ever to provide parks, natural areas, and outdoor recreational programs in places where children can play and be physically active. Um, this is a point that, again, pulls very well, and it's something, too, if you go back and look at data that we've seen, um, not necessarily related to these propositions, but since um, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, people have started, you know, there's been a major, major increase in people's use of natural areas and open space and a desire to get outside, and that usage has not slowed down. Um, it's, it's a trend that's continuing. So, again, stressing this point that it's very important to provide people with a place where they could disconnect, get away from technology, um, and enjoy um, open spaces is very, very important. Um, and then I think this is the last one of why it's important. I mentioned this a little bit, but with land prices rising, the amount of natural areas dwindling, um, we must act now to preserve um, and protect our last remaining natural areas for our children and our grandchildren before they are lost to development. Um, we're at a very critical time right now with these propositions. Well, this will um, empower our, um, again, our conservation districts, our forest preserve districts to uh, acquire these land parcels that are currently available or are expected to become available um, in the, the near future and protect them for future generations. I, I misspoke, there is one more. Um, and finally, um, purchasing and preserving these natural areas and improving water quality also plays a very important role in preserving the quality of life um, in the county or in our counties. So voting yes will allow the Forest Preserve and Conservation, and finally, um, voting yes will allow the Forest Preserve and Conservation Districts to unlock state and federal matching funds um, so that the counties get their, get their share. Um, there's various programs, matching grants, and other things available um, that if um, our forest and urban conservation districts are able to um, get this additional funding through these propositions, um, they'll be able to get those state and federal matching funds, which will help um, our, our, um, home, our residents' um, tax dollars go even further in protecting um, natural areas. And I will turn Thanks. it over, I think it's to Abby now. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Abby Beck. I'm with the Conservation Foundation. As Dan mentioned, we are running the Vote Yes campaigns for both Kane and DuPage counties. And I wanted to thank you so much for joining us today to learn a little bit more about these really important referenda. Like Chris just mentioned, it's a very noisy political uh, season, and um, we know there's a lot of attention and excitement around this election already. The worst thing that could happen is that we have a high voter turnout, but folks voting for national level candidates don't scroll all the way down to where the good stuff is, where the local where the local ballot measures are. We know from the polling data, as was mentioned, that our communities love the forest preserves. They love their conservation districts. They just need to know, we need to make sure those folks know that these ballot questions exist. And then we need to convince a few more folks that are on the fence to vote yes as well. And that's where these toolkits come in. So all four counties have put together campaign toolkits that help advocates get the word out. They're all pretty similar documents and they are designed to be one-stop shops for people that want to help amplify this information. Contained in each of these are the key messages that Chris just went over. So if you didn't commit them to memory, do not fear. You can have those at your fingertips to review any time before you're chatting with your family and friends. And there's also links embedded in each to all of the different resources, the county's websites, any um, if you need more specifics about what these um, campaigns are going to do, what these ballot measures are going to do, they're all contained in there. Um, next slide. And then inside each of these toolkits is a link to a digital asset library where content can be freely shared. Here's a page from the DuPage County toolkit. You're going to find lots and lots of Facebook posts that take those key messages and put them with pretty pictures. And then there's going to be captions there that are very easy to just copy and paste. So, um, so we've taken a lot of the heavy lifting for you and in, in terms of helping get this word out. They're reformatted for Instagram as well. We have a PowerPoint slide in case you're doing a presentation and just wanna drop in a little vote yes about that county. We've got banner art that can be used on social media, on email um, headers or wherever you need that, that graphic, profile pictures, logos, and more. We've also included print assets into our um, toolkits as well. So 
flyers, postcards, and posters that folks can print at home if they've got a they've got a meeting, they've got a group that they think would receive this information. Well, um, people can just take that, print it at home, and uh, send it around. Um, if you go to the next slide. Here's a page from the McHenry County Toolkit. Also in, included in these documents are email templates, so graphics and language. Again, really easy to copy and paste so that you can get the word out and we're being really consistent with our messages across, across these campaigns. Um, so again, yeah, everything we could have done to try and make amplifying this message as easy as possible. And I know that we've shared the campaign websites in the chat. You can access the toolkits from our campaign websites for Kane and DuPage, and I dropped the links directly to the toolkits um, in the chat as well. If you're on Facebook, Kane, DuPage, and Lake all have campaign Facebook pages as well. So if you go to Facebook and search for Kane Neighbors for Open Space, Clean Air, and Clean Water, or DuPage Neighbors for Open Space, Clean Air, and Clean Water, and also vote yes for Lake County Forest Preserves, um, if you're on Facebook, you live in those counties, please go to those pages today, like and follow them and maybe share a post or comment on a post, anything that can kind of get that algorithm moving in our favor and see those, see that content show up to more people will really help amplify the message. Um, so again, we're really appreciative that you spent your lunch hour with us to learn why we should all vote yes this November. Um, please help in any way, get the word out. Um, and if you have any ideas or uh, questions about the toolkits, specifically for Kane and DuPage, I can help you with that. Or if there's a piece of content that would be really helpful as you're, as you're talking to people, we're um, adapting that document as we go to make sure that it's as useful as possible. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I answered a question that the slides and a PDF will be shared on the website and will also be sent out to you. Are there any other questions? Please feel free. It's a small group. So just go ahead and raise your hand or um, you can unmute yourself and ask a question at this time. Patty. Yeah. Uh, hi, it's Patty Wetley from WTTW News. Um, I'm not sure if there's any representatives from any of the uh, involved forest preserve districts here, but I'm wondering if there are any specific projects you could point to as like pie in the sky or something specific um, that these funds would enable because it's so gen it's you know general to talk about you know, land acquisition or maintenance? Are there are there things that these kind of um, funds would have enabled in the past or that will be great projects um, coming up within the next, let's say, five years? Dan, it looks like you have an answer right Yeah. Yeah. Um, for, for the Kane Forest Preserve District, on their website about the referendum, they have some very specific projects listed okay. that if the referendum passes, they'll be able to do. Okay. So those okay. are, and they have graphics and everything um, to go along with it. So it should it should help you out. Um, for the uh, Lake County Forest Preserve, a few um, of the uh, highlighted projects, I guess, from my perspective, is the uh, completion of the Millennium Trail, which by its name, you know that they've been working on <laughs> for the last 24 years. Um, it's uh, about two thirds completed. On, on the sections that will be on Forest Preserve property, uh, working with other uh, landowners as well. So that's that will be a, a, a great project. And then um, one of uh, the projects that I'm also excited about is Lake Marie Forest Preserve is a uh, holding on the chain of lakes, um, which has been um, in public ownership for well over a decade now, but there's been no uh, real easy public access. So there'll be uh, money and the um, available to develop uh, entrances and some recreational amenities to that really, really beautiful property um, on Lake Marie and the Chain of Lakes. So those are just a couple of uh, highlighted projects that uh, might be worthwhile mentioning. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Kate, uh, 
Kate Frilling, do you have a question? You have your hand up. I'm sorry, I don't know your first name. Harry. Harry. Yeah, so I'm with the DuPage County Forest Preserve District. I'm the executive director. So I just wanted to chime in and let you know that we have a 2019 master plan that was approved by our board of commissioners. And if this referendum is approved in DuPage County, it will allow us to complete those certified um, projects. And so those are found on our website as well. Thank you. Susan had a question in the chat and Susan said, are, are any of the campaigns providing templates for letters to the editors? I can I can speak to I know we actually I don't think that we do have anything um, at this point, um, but I did want to add something if this might be an OK time to do that. We don't. But to answer that question, we do not have something specific in terms of a letter. Um, that is something that we consider we could consider putting out in our toolkit. Um, I did want to mention that we do have quite a number of agencies up here. Um, social service agencies that rely on our open spaces and they understand the value of access to uh, nature for mental and physical well-being. So while they cannot, they don't feel comfortable endorsing the Vote Yes campaign, um, they are more than willing to get information out about the proposition. And so our conservation district has their own toolkit. So when I reach out to them and they aren't able to endorse then they can go to the conservation district's toolkit and at least spread the word about the proposition and educate people on that vote. So I just wanted to make sure I put that out there because that's an option for people who are maybe in a position that they can't, um, because of their position or their organization can't say vote yes. Um, but that was a great question and we will look into providing that kind of an option. So thank you in terms of a letter to the editor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mark Johnston has a question in the chat also. Um, Mark, do you wanna, want me to read it out? This is probably beyond the scope of this call, but when adding more wildlife habitat, how do you prioritize where land is restored? Are you considering the ecological connectivity and or proximity to the underserved communities, for example? Well, um, in Lake County, I can tell you that there, there was a plan put together uh, years ago that looked at um, the entire county um, and mapped, you know, um, soils, habitat, potential restoration areas. So those, um, and they were, they've been prioritized and those are the areas that, that, that drive both our land acquisition program and the restoration program, because it makes sense to restore what is, you know, the best quality. Um, flip side is also the, the, the district board of Commissioners um, did create a policy to look at um, distribution of forest preserve assets throughout the county, um, uh, so they're more consistently spread out to every community, regardless of um, of uh, economic um, uh, you know uh, status. Um, you know, some areas are cut off by major roads and highways, so they're doing a really good job, in my opinion of taking a good look at not just where we're at, but where we're not and trying to put those assets on the ground in those places. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Carrie, you have your hand up again. Thank you. Yeah, so I just wanted to kind of piggyback off of that question is, again, kind of going back to our 2019 master plan that was adopted, we have our restoration projects prioritized in that master plan. So we know where our party has um, for restoration is for the next 10 years. And then we and the decision making that went into that is similar to what Mike was saying is that we we do have our restoration projects spread out throughout the county. So it's not all happening in one area of the county as well. Thank you. Carolyn? Um, yes, I wanted to, um, as we were sitting here thinking, um, I did want to add a couple of more points about the conservation district. Um, I know a lot of our focus is on operations and a lot of that isn't a lot of, it doesn't ring a lot of bells, but um, I did mention earlier in the conversation about our accessible boat launch. I think that's going to be a huge opportunity and that's just the beginning of what we're going to be able to do with this kind of funding. Um, but one of the things that we, we do have master plans for different sites. 
um, and I had forgotten when we were sitting here, but that we do have um, our Fox Bluff um, master plan. This particular piece of property um, was the site of the Camp Algonquin back into the fresh air days of the 30s. Um, where people from the 30s, 40s, I'm, I don't remember exactly the time period, but when people were, um, women and children came out to uh, Camp Algonquin to have fresh air and to get away and, and to re, uh, recharge and have access to nature, we do have a master plan for that. It is an um, excellent site. It sits along the Fox River, so it would have access to the river as well. Um, that plan has been put on hold because, quite frankly, over time, it's been difficult to get property tax increases um, here in the county. And so we this is gonna be a great opportunity to get that master plan off the ground. So that's that's kind of one of those major projects that we haven't been able to do. Um, so in terms of connectivity, we um, are uh, one of our largest sites, um, our glacial park is part of a core um, that connects with the uh, um, Hackmatack Wildlife Refuge which cross, crosses our borders into Wisconsin. And so when you talk about as we acquire land in conjunction, we try to con make those connections as well. Um, and so that's an, um, that whole project with Friends of Hackmatack, Hackmatack Wildlife Refuge, Open Lands, um, the Conservation District is getting that master plan up there um, connected as well over time. So that's another opportunity that we can see going forward. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, we will, we will, um, oh, did, did someone raise their hand? I think I saw. Um, Laura, I'll just say that, yeah, and the reason I brought that, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I, I, the reason I brought that up is because we're doing work on connectivity and um, prioritization of uh, rights of way areas and kind of how those align with um, existing um, open space uh, protected areas. Um, so I just wanted to see how, you know, if that also kind of aligns with some of the prioritization along um, conservation districts and stuff as well. So thanks for the answers to those. It's great. All right. Well, I really appreciate you all spending uh, your lunch with us. And um, if there are no more questions, I will go ahead and give you 20 minutes back to, to, um, to enjoy your day and we'll send us materials out to you. I wanna give a thanks again uh, to the support from uh, IDNR, Urban and Community Forestries and, um, and the US Forest Service. Thank you. Thank you.